Hello. This video is part of a series introducing key concepts about data collection for the From the Ground Up Research Project, a partnership grant sponsored by the Social Science and Humanities Research Council of Canada and based at the University of British Columbia. For more about the project, visit our website at frogbear.org. Today, we'll be going to the Nitobe Memorial Garden on the campus of UBC in Vancouver to introduce some of the basic principles and techniques for documenting a site or building during a field visit. I'll be demonstrating how to document a site using still photographs and how to streamline the process of preparing your metadata, description, keywords, and so on, for the Frogbear repository. We're going to focus on documenting one particular building, the Ichiboan, or Hut of the Sweeping View. Our goal is to produce a set of photos that will allow the various users of our online collection to get both the big picture and close-ups. There are many tasks to juggle, and the best way to ensure that they all get done is to divide them up among the team members and to make sure that everyone knows what their role is. I'll be the team leader, coordinating the members of the team, identifying what needs to be documented, and how. On our team, we also have a photographer, Meng Lu. Next, we have Will, who will be documenting what is to be photographed and recording additional information. This could include, for example, historical background about the site or observations about it, gathered from the site itself or from local experts and scholars from the cluster. These notes will be the basis for the metadata that goes into the repository, along with the photographs. Finally, Mung will be responsible for lighting, in this case, a flash that connects wirelessly to the camera. Since we're working outdoors, additional lighting might not be necessary, but the flash will help if we need to illuminate details in dark areas. Another task for the lighting person, or for another member of the team, is to provide keys that will later help team members when they're going through the photographs on a computer. That's why Meng is holding this whiteboard. We'll see later how it will be used. So, our team is on site, and we've identified this building, Ichiboan, as one that we want to document. Before we start taking pictures, it's a good idea to do some planning. We'll want at least one overview picture that shows the building in its context, and closer views of various sides and details. Keep in mind that as with many religious buildings in East Asia, the structure is actually part of a complex. In this case, the tea room is surrounded by its own garden enclosure. We should make sure to include this context so that repository users who find photographs of this building will have a sense of the setting and the relationship among the parts. We should also decide how to proceed through the space to ensure systematic coverage. In this case, I plan to move around the building in a clockwise direction. If there's time, the team can walk around the site first, not taking photos, but noting what to shoot and from what position, as well as starting to take notes. In this case, Will can note the location of the Ichiboan within the garden, against the east wall just south of the entrance, and its name in Japanese characters and romanization, as well as, optionally, an English translation. The name here means Hut of the Sweeping View. We'll also record the building's date of construction and its purpose. As we walk around, we might notice details that we hadn't thought of and plan to document them. For example, in the garden we see the covered waiting bench, the guest's first stop on the way to a tea service, and note that it should be included. Typically, our first shots will be overviews that include both the target building and its surroundings, so that viewers have a sense of where they stand in relation to one another. Let's check one small detail on the camera, the time. Since the camera records the time of each photograph and notes and other records might be tied to that time, it's important the date and time are correct. And if you're traveling, first check that the time zone is set correctly. Another reason to make sure your camera clock is accurate is that you can link photos to exact locations by setting a smartphone to use its GPS to record its location in a special file. You can later use that file to match up the time of each photo to a location. Now, we're ready to start taking pictures. Let's set up to take these shots, finding a viewpoint some distance away. Since this is a distant view, we don't need to set up any lighting, but our lighting person will have another important task, using this whiteboard to provide a reminder of the photo subjects. It's a simple dry erase board, but we've glued to it a color chart with a ruler. It's extremely useful for linking your notes with your photographs by providing a sort of heading that you can easily spot 
when scrolling through photos on a computer screen. Just snap a photo of the whiteboard before each sequence, and you won't have to wonder what the subsequent pictures are of. In this case, we'll write a heading, Nito Begard, a subheading, Ich Boan, and a description of what follows, Overview from the West. Let's take a few shots from some different settings and slightly different positions. Now, we'll move on to some closer views. We've already plotted out a path clockwise around the building. We can start with the covered waiting bench. Will records the metadata details for each group of photos as we move around the building. In this case, there's also a plaque indicating the name and function of the building. It's a good idea to photograph that as well. Even if the photo doesn't go into the repository, and it probably won't, it will provide useful background information for a record description that's part of the metadata. We'll move on to photographing the main building. But first, it's helpful to think about whether your photos so far will allow viewers to understand the relationship among the parts of a site. In this case, our general view of the tea garden area shows something of the relationship between the two buildings. But we might also take pictures showing the view of the main hall from the waiting bench, since that is how a guest attending the tea ceremony would encounter it. As I move around the building, I'm going to take a series of photos that cover each of the four sides. At the very least, I'll take a shot covering each face of the building. And if there are details to focus in on, I'll take pictures of them as well. This could be things like a signboard with the name of the building, architectural elements, or decorative elements. And for each, it's a good idea to take a separate photo of the whiteboard as a reminder. At the end of a long day, it can be hard to remember which side is which. All right, we now have a series of photos of this building and its surroundings, along with complete metadata about them. To recap what we did, we started by planning our visit to the site, built a team with clear roles, worked through the site systematically, and made sure that we took careful notes at each step. That will make the next steps, preparing the data and metadata for the FrogBear repository, a lot easier. Thanks for watching this video. For more about data collection and what to do with the images you've collected, take a look at our documentation at frogbear.org. Mm -hmm.